Hi, this is Jim Bergman from Imperial. Today we're going to go over the TU9001 Refrigeration, Air Conditioning and Heat Pump Training Unit. So I'm going to walk you through all the features of the training unit, how the training unit works, what we can demonstrate with the training unit, and a little bit about the construction of the unit and how we build it. Alright, so let's start with the construction of the Imperial 9001. The beauty of the Imperial products is how they're, really, is how they're made. The 9001 is constructed with high density polyethylene panels, T8020 aluminum extrusions, and also constructed with a lot of off the shelf parts you can use if you ever have to have a replacement. Again, I can't overstress the importance of this because if some of the trainers that I've seen in the past are uh, put together with a lot of proprietary components. And when we have proprietary components, that means if you're down, you're down until you get the part from the manufacturer. What I really like about the construction of these trainers is they use research products for the accumulator and receiver. We use off-the-shelf gauges, Sporlin products for the dryers and the sight glass, superior valves, Sporlin uh, TXVs and AXVs, uh, and really uh, common modine coils. We also use variable speed fan controls so we can make the, the fans uh, speed up and slow down. These are a Dayton product, Dayton condenser fan motors on the back. So what's really nice is if we ever have to service this unit, you're not down for days, you're just down for a few hours where you get parts from a local supply house. One of the best features of the TU9001 is that it's a very portable unit. TU9001 is very thin so it goes right through a doorway. It's on a set of four casters you can see down here in the bottom. The casters, uh, since there's four of them, it rolls easily in any direction. Two of the casters in the back are lockable so we can lock this thing in position when we want to. And also it's got integrated storage, so if you want to keep your gauges or refrigerant in the bottom, you've got a place to do that. So probably one of the coolest things about this trainer is it's a total refrigeration trainer. So we can teach students an air conditioning system, a refrigerator, a freezer, or a heat pump. And the way that this is accomplished is through the valving arrangements. So in the lab manual it tells you exactly what valves to open and close to configure each system. And if we wanted to make this, let's say, uh, turn it from a refrigerator to an air conditioning system, well then we, we could close certain valves here on the superior valves and we'd open up the capillary tube here, bypass our liquid receiver down in the bottom, and then we'd set up the system accordingly and then we'd have an air conditioning system. We could do the same thing if we wanted to do refrigeration. We have an automatic expansion valve so we could maintain a constant evaporator pressure or we could teach the students what a TXV does and that it maintains constant superheat. So there's a lot of flexibility built into this and again you get four training units in one. So this really allows you to teach a variety of things in the classroom or the lab and get students to understand the differences in systems and the characteristics that they all have. Alright, so before we start the unit up, first thing I want to do is show you a couple of the key things that make the trainer unique and why you'd want to have a trainer in your classroom versus just build your own refrigeration system. One of the things that's really hard for students to understand is the state of the refrigerant as it enters and leaves the evaporator coil and the condenser coil. The TU9001 has extended view sight glasses. The extended view sight glasses allow you to see the refrigerant and allow you to see the oil returning and flowing through the system. The other thing that we did on the trainer that makes it uh, very, very functional is we put in variable speed controls. The variable speed controls allow us to speed up and slow down the fans. So if I'm using the automatic expansion valve and I want to slow the fan down and show the students that the evaporator pressure stays the same, I can do that. I can also slow down the condenser fan and I can show the students that the head pressure is going to rise and that on a capillary tube system we're going to have an increase in pressure on the evaporator. With a TXV, the pressure would stay the same. So with the variable speed fan controls and the sight glasses, students can actually get an idea of how load changes, what happens to the refrigerant, and what things look like as they flow through the system. Alright, so let's do a little walk around the trainer and I'm going to show you some things that we would do before we get the thing started up here. So, let's start with, on the side of the trainer right here is a master switch and the master switch turns the power on or off for the entire appliance. If we go back over to this side, we have a couple controls for a compressor, which I want to make sure that I have off. My evaporator fan, which I have set to, uh, off right now, I'm going to go ahead and turn it to high. And I'm also going to turn my condenser fan on high, so those will start when I turn on the master power. Also, I want to go through and just generally check my valve configurations. You know, I have three metering devices here, and I can tell that these are off. This one is turning, so I know that my TXV valve up the top here is open. And I've gone through and I've checked the rest of my valves to make sure they're in the proper locations and everything is going to flow the way that I expect it to flow. Now, a couple interesting things here is, you know, well, what happens if you don't have the valves in the right position? 
Well, in the machine we do have a Ranko uh, high and low pressure control, and a high low pressure control will shut the compressor off if you did anything that uh, that might damage it, like uh, oh, uh, maybe shutting a discharge valve in the compressor or bypassing something in the valving configuration. Uh, you know where that could happen. Uh, I think it'd be a little tough to do, but I'm sure somehow a student could figure out a way to. And we have that that safety built in. Also, the machine does have a large accumulator to catch any liquid refrigerant that might bypass back into the compressor, so we're protected uh, very well. It does have a bypass control for the accumulator bypass. We do want to make sure that's shut. As long as the accumulator is in the circuit, we're good, and there's really no way we're going to get liquid refrigerant back to the compressor. Now, if we go through and, and get this thing started here, uh, it's just a simple flip of the switch, and you can see my two fans started up. So I have my condenser and evaporator fan started. And right here I have a, a uh, built-in Ranko uh, thermostatic control. So that's, that's going. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the compressor. And we'll let this thing start to operate. One of the great things about the TU-9001 is there's a lot of integrated gauges built into the system. So students don't have to attach and disconnect gauges all the time. And we're not going to lose the refrigerant out of the system. We have the low side gauge, we have a high side gauge here over on the condenser, we have another high side gauge up here in the top, and this is intended for the heat pump when we put it in reverse operation. Again, with the system operating, you can easily see the state of the refrigerant in, in the extended view side glass. And so right now, uh, you really can't see much of anything in here because this is the outlet of the evaporator and this line is all vapor. Down here at the bottom, however, we can see the refrigerant flowing through the evaporator coil coming out of the metering device and that it's a saturated liquid. Going down here at the condenser, we can see again we're all vapor. And then down here in the liquid line, we can see the liquid as it enters the receiver and heads back towards, uh, as, it, excuse me, as, as it enters the receiver and then heads back towards the, the filter dryer and the uh, site class. One of the more important things for students to understand is how a system responds and changes to a load. So what we did by adding the variable speed fan controls on here is allow you to demonstrate that. By simply adjusting the speed up or down, and you can hear the fan uh, noise increasing considerably here, by adjusting that fan up or down, we can change the amount of air and in turn the amount of load that goes across the evaporator and or change the amount of refrigerant that's rejected in the condenser. This allows us to show the students what's going to happen if we have a dirty condenser, a dirty evaporator, high airflow, low airflow, and simulate a bunch of different conditions. The nice part about this is you can use it to predict the behavior. So a lot of times when I'm teaching students, I'll ask them, what do you think is going to happen if I slow down the condenser fan? What do you think will happen if I slow down the evaporator fan? But where it gets interesting is what happens with different metering devices. If I have a TXV and I slow down the condenser fan, I will get an increase in head pressure, but my evaporator pressure will stay the same. If, on the other hand, I had the capillary tube on here, and I slowed down the condenser fan, I'll see a rise in pressure in both sides of the system. So the T9001 allows us to demonstrate these things very quickly, very easily, and allows students to very quickly understand what's happening in a refrigeration system. So if the Imperial Trainer looks familiar, that's because it's been built for over 50 years. This is a time-proven, tested trainer that actually, like I said, incorporates four systems into one. That's what makes this product unique, and that's what makes this a good fit for almost any type of lab that you'd want to do. This is a great introductory piece of equipment for all kinds of students at any different skill level. And again, it allows us to do a lot of different configurations, a lot of training, and with a lab manual that comes with a, with a unit, you don't have to spend a lot of time developing new materials for your students to use. This is Jim Bergman for Imperial. Thanks for watching. I hope you got a little bit out of the TU9001 training video.